Hey everyone, Greg Albrecht here. I want to go over my presentation, ATAC for EMS Operations. You might have seen an earlier version of this deck that was TLP Green. Uh, that deck was for sharing within the community. Uh, this deck has been cleared as TLP White, so you're allowed to share this deck and any of the content of this deck as you wish. Uh, an agenda for our presentation is I'm going to introduce myself, set the stage for why we're using uh, ATAC for EMS operations, a look back at where we came from versus where we are today for EMS operations, some of the solutions we've come up with, tools, more tools, and then parting words. So a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Greg Albrecht. I'm also a HAM, W2GMD. I'm a California State EMT with tactical endorsement, uh, which basically means I'm qualified to call 911 on your behalf. I'm also an EMS supervisor and an ICT specialist. That's Information Communications Technology Specialist. I've been disaster deployed, uh, event and incident deployed. Uh, I've worked as an EMT, EMS supervisor, dispatch supervisor. Uh, I've touched all the buttons and written on all the paper. So this is kind of a grim slide, but I want to set the stage for why this is important for EMS operations. Um, a look back through history of the threats to mass gathering events. There's kind of a bifurcation here between actor-led events versus acts of nature. So let's look at where we're coming from. Let's look at legacy EMS operations. Uh, this was primarily paper maps a post-it note based CAD or incident management system, manual unit tracking, uh, and overall horrible situational awareness and no real common operating picture. I'd like to review how this came to fruition for me. Uh, the organization I work with, Rock Medicine, took over EMS for the San Francisco Pride event in 2013. Now, if we start by comparing San Francisco Fire Department's uh, daily call volume, uh, San Francisco Fire did about 250 EMS calls for service daily in 2013 across the 49 square miles of San Francisco, excluding the airport and Treasure Island. And that was for a 24, op 24 hour operational period. So every 24 hours, there was an average of 250 EMS calls. Let's compare that to the first year we did Pride. Uh, in a nine hour operational period, so less than half of the time of a normal day, uh, day operation period, we did 118 calls for service across less than half a square mile. So that's significant. That's a lot of calls. And this was our, this was our incident management system at the time, uh, our paper-based CAD, uh, paper maps, and no, no great SA and uh, two dispatchers. In fact, actually, only one of those was a dispatcher. The other was from the auxiliary service who scrubbed in the help. And this is where we were this year in 2022. Uh, almost a complete uh, glass-based interface with mapping, uh, incident management, real-time situational awareness, and more than one dispatcher. So what made this possible? Well, the first is our ability to pull in our CAD information. This is our computer-aided dispatch or our IMS incident management system into TAC. Uh, by doing this, we were able to push out call location information, so our incident location information, as well as incident updates to our responders in the field. This is what the integration looked like. We were using the CAD system called ResGrid, which is a cloud-based CAD. But the same flow could be applicable to almost any CAD system. Uh, the PSAP would answer 911 calls, enter them, uh, hand them over to our EMS dispatch. EMS dispatch would hand them in, over to our EMS units while recording all of the pertinent call information in our CAD. And then that CAD would push out call information to ATAC devices that our medics were using in the field. So our medics could look down at their phones, not only see a map, see where they were. They could also see where the call's at, as well as real-time call information, all from one device. 
Another integration we rolled out was with PulsePoint. Uh, San Francisco recently deployed PulsePoint, and there's other communities around the country that are using PulsePoint today. PulsePoint started out as a way of sending call information to non-first responders, to the general public. It evolved into a way of dispatching verified responders for CPR and cardiac arrest calls. So this means that if you're CPR certified, you can register with PulsePoint as a verified responder. And if a 911 call comes in for a cardiac arrest or CPR in progress, and you're nearby, you can get this alert on your phone and respond. This also pushes out other call information beyond medical calls like fire calls and in some communities, police calls. What we were able to do was pull in the pulse point information that San Francisco sends out and also send that to our EMS units. So in addition to having full visibility of the calls that EMS is responding to, our units can see other nearby calls in case there's duplicates or overlap or additional resources needed. In communities that are using PulsePoint, we can also pull directly from the PulsePoint system. The PulsePoint data that's available to the general public is usually obfuscated without approximate addresses or locations, but agencies can elect to use the PulsePoint push feed. Uh, and using the PulsePoint push feed, we can actually push real call information out to ATAC. So what you see here is uh, down in Corona, California, they're using the PulsePoint push feed to send real-time CAD information out to their ATAC devices. Uh, you can see here, this is a call that Corona Fire Engine 1 responded to. Uh, you can see their Engine 1 tablet inside the engine, as well as the tablet that the medic is using, all running ATAC, along with the call information for the sick person. So here's a challenge from Outside Lands which is a music festival in San Francisco. Uh, we have an altered mental status, possible DKA by the North box office. Can you find it? I didn't think so. So this is typically what we're given in the EMS special event environment. A hope, usually PDF map, sometimes a paper map with not very good geographical reference information or geocoding. So the first step with a map like that is to run it through an application called MapTiler. What MapTiler lets us do is geo-reference this image against actual ground truth. Uh, you can see on the left an example of using a event map or a hotel map on the right. Uh, this is the left side of your screen, but the right pane of the left side of your screen. There's a, looks like a hotel map and they're geo-referencing against a open street map map on the left. Once you do that, you're able to spit out tiles of the special event map. So if we look on the right side of our screen, we can see that we've taken that map we had for outside lands and actually overlaid it onto a map of the event area, which is Golden Gate Park, San Francisco. And then in the middle there, uh, you can actually see a CAD call that came in after we had done that integration for chest pains. So we're able to overlay the real-time call information over the special event map and we generated the special event map using MapTiler. For outside lands, we were using a different CAD system or incident management system called 24-7 ISS. The same workflow applies. We were taking in 911 calls, dispatching them and entering them into our IMS. That information went out as an email to the SendGrid system. SendGrid parses the email, pushes it to another system called Node-RED, which then turns it into cursor on target that our ATAC devices can see. On the right-hand side of your screen, you can see the chest pains call geo-reference to the call location, along with updates for the call, including initial dispatch, units assigned, and disposition of the call. Rapid SOS is a platform for geolocating 911 calls. Uh, you would put this in the category of uh, enhanced 911 or next gen 911 type systems. Uh, if you call 911 today from almost any smartphone and your local PSAP is using Rapid SOS, 
they can actually get your call information from that system and geolocate you. We had an incident during an event when a 911 call came in and our field units were unable to locate the call. So we quickly built an integration with Rapid SOS where we take the Rapid SOS location information, send it out as a cursor on target marker to our ATAC devices, and it will display in real time the location of the caller on our special event map. So if you see on the right here, this is an actual call that came in uh, to 911 at one of our events and we were able to drop a pin on a map and actually vector our units to that call in real time. So here's another challenge. I need to track units across 49 square miles of mixed terrain. Uh, the map you see here is from the San Francisco Marathon. Uh, this was an event we ran earlier in the year where we had uh, first aid stations, watering stations, uh, transport units, trail, tail units, intel units spread out all around San Francisco and we needed to be able to track their location information in real time. The challenges of San Francisco range from deep, ur deep urban canyons uh, where position, navigation, timing, PNT, GPS is denied, um, SATCOM is denied, and it's really hard to, to use RF in a lot of these environments. If you look at the picture on the right, that is downtown San Francisco. That is one of the areas that we need to cover. Uh, getting satellite coverage into there is difficult. Getting any kind of line of sight RF into there is, is difficult. Combine that challenge with some of the other challenges we have, literal open ocean. Um, part of the route of this race went across the Golden Gate Bridge, which out in the middle of the Golden Gate Bridge, LTE can be iffy and RF can be iffy, but there's plenty of satellite coverage because there's no buildings blocking you. So how do we marry uh, the challenges of deep urban canyons as well as wide open spaces? Well, we built a tool for doing this called COT Proxy, and I'll go into what COT Proxy does soon. COT Proxy is a real-time data transform engine for cursor on target. So how did we use it? What we were able to do was fuse three different position location information devices into a single marker on a map. So if you see, we're pulling in uh, radio-based beacons, a in-reach satellite-based beacon, as well as an ATAC device. Combine all of that location information to a single marker and send it out as a cot called Medic 52. So this would be as opposed to me seeing three different markers on the map. I only have one marker on the map that's getting its location information from whichever of these three on the left is connected and sending information. So this means that when I'm downtown and I have good LTE, my smartphone is sending location information. When I'm out in the cut or on the bridge, my in-reach can send information. Or if I'm in a satellite denied environment, if I have line of sight RF, my radio beacon or my APRS transmitter will receive information. But to my command staff or to other users, I only appear as one icon, Medic 52. What you're seeing here is an example of transforming COT in real time. We're getting an icon in from ADSB, which only has the airframe information and the tail number. But we already know that this is LA Sheriff's Department Air 5. So we're going to transform that icon to have the right call sign, the right cursor on target type, and even apply a special icon that indicates that it's a law enforcement rotorcraft. And then we can send that back out to our ATAC devices. A lot of the tools we've shown so far are based on a library called PyTAC, which is the Python Team Awareness Kit. PyTAC is a set of modules for Python that allow you to build ATAC clients and servers. All of the tools we're showing today are based on PyTAC, and PyTAC is compatible with several of the TAC products, including WinTAC, ATAC, and ITAC. You can send and receive cursor on target. PyTAC supports TLS, TCP, UDP, and multicast. There's plugins for spot, inreach, AIS, AIS aggregators like AIS Hub, 
ADSB, ADSB aggregators like ADSB Exchange, as well as Amateur Radio APRS and PulsePoint CAD. Here's an actual screenshot of a search and rescue team in Arizona using the inReach to cursor on target gateway. This was a call that was sent to me the weekend that we published the inReach package. This SAR team was on a SAR mission and used it right away. Some other tools that we've utilized are fused sidecar. ATAC out of the box only uses the GPS location provider under Android, which means that if you're in a GPS denied environment, such as in a building or underground, you don't have any positioning information. Android itself has a method called fused location provider, which will allow you to position yourself even if you're in a GPS denied environment. This utilizes LTE towers, Wi-Fi signals and Bluetooth signals to get an approximate location, which it can then feed into ATAC. So the Fused Sidecar app gives you this functionality. It's available on GitHub as an APK, and it's compatible with ATAC on any device. Another tool we've used to rapidly prototype cursor on target and TAC integrations is Node-RED. Node-RED is a visual-based tool for building workflows and data flows, and it's really easy to get started. It'll run on almost any computer, including Windows, and it's easy to drag, drop, connect, and transform information in real time. I'd like to refer to Node-RED as my tactical ETL. Here's a maritime domain awareness map that I built using Node-RED. You can see I've overlaid the shipping lane information for San Francisco, along with real-time AIS information that I'm getting in from the vessels out on the water. This is all built using Node-RED. Some other tools are AIS COT, which allows maritime AIS into TAC, ADSB XCOT, which takes ADSB Exchange, ADSB Aggregator information and can send it out to TAC products. ADSB COT, which takes over the air RF based ADSB and sends it out to TAC. Stratix COT, which is a variation popular with pilots. APRS COT, which is an amateur radio service called APRS, which gives positioning information over the air. We can send that out to COT and TAC. Intercot is a Garmin inReach to TAC gateway. SpotCot is a Global Star Spot to TAC gateway. This is a satellite locator. And we have plugins for the Orion and Zello PTT gateway, allowing you to send position information of, of your users from either of those services out to TAC. To learn more, I would recommend joining some of the TAC communities that are out there. There's the TAC Discord, which is a global ecosystem of TAC users. That's available by either clicking the link or scanning the QR code. We also have an ATAC end users for public safety Slack. Uh, go ahead and send me an email and I can send you an invite for that Slack. Thank you.